And then in my ears, I can hear Charlie go, one, two, three, four, and I turn everything off, and we're back into it. Nice. So that's kind of like what he's got his looper going for. So he kind of do the same thing. Because he's got... Secrets. He, you know, he's got two delays on his pedal board because he's doing more of the... I like to call them analeads. <laughs> <laughs> he's doing the analeads. It's not really... I <laughs> Welcome to Room 6, the channel dedicated to the local music scene and the people that make it, including me and these guys. I met my guests at Triple B, or Backstage Bar and Billiards, down on Fremont Street, end of April, at a Claustrophobia show, and it was awesome. They were awesome. Their sound has been described as aggressive math core from the bright lights of Sin City, but their PR says they fit in like the dude that crashed your house party, then suddenly becomes the life of it. <laughs> I heard they smell like cheese. That's so <laughs> accurate. Not the cheese part. <laughs> yes. Their debut I eat a lot of cheese. Yeah, well. Debut album, Lord Leech, is out now. Please welcome to the channel, Annalita. Say hello. Hi. How you doing? Go ahead and... For, for, by the way, welcome to the channel. Before I do anything else. Oh, cheers. Clink. Clunk. Clink. Yeah, yeah, cheers me. Go on. Doing? Yeah. Cheers you. Ooh. <sighs> Room 6 Whiskey. <laughs> if, anybody, if any whiskey... If any... Alcohol wants to sponsor the channel. By all means, I will use your alcohol and I will drink nothing but. I put my own name on it. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> make money off of it. No, yeah. but then, uh, um, this bitch. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, in case somebody's watching this and they don't know who Annalita is, thank you very much. Go ahead and introduce yourself. Tell them what you're doing in the band and tell them who we're missing. Uh, I'm Kevin. I play guitar and I sing. <clears throat> I'm Anthony or Fat Tony, and I do the same thing. And uh, Charlie isn't here. He plays drums. That's it. There's three of us. You sure? I'm positive. Yes. Well, there's three of us on stage. Ah. There's a secret fourth there's, member. There's a secret fourth yeah. jabroni. We have a we have a bass player who's more of a you know this this was a quarantine project. Mm -hmm. And when it came down to post quarantine and playing shows, our bass player was like, "Oh, we're doing that." <laughs> That's a thing. Surprise! And, uh, Live music is that still a thing? It's for us. It's not a huge deal. We've been practicing as three people since the beginning, right? So it's like I, I did notice. Year. I think you were missing a bass player at the show. Yep. And That's was, how we and, tour. And, That's how we play shows. But yeah, you know, we which have is a guy who writes bass for us, so. right? And he's really good. Yeah. Do you, want give him a <laughs> Do you want to give him a shout? Yeah, Kurt. Kurt plays bass. He's our studio bassist. Shout out, Kurt. And he's also our video director, too. He does all of our music nice. for us. Um, you know what? I think I'm going to put his social media handle here. I will get that, <laughs> I will get that from you later. Okay. All right, cool. Um, before I get into kind of individual questions, I want to ask you some generic questions that I ask of all my credit. Okay. Number one, why'd you name yourself after a leech or a ring leech worm? Um, <laughs> well, well um, what happened was... yeah. The, story, actually, the yeah. guy who helped me write, the drummer who had helped me write the first album, mm -hmm. he had, we were sitting there thinking of names of what we wanted to call this new project, and he was like, Leech, Leeches. And I'm like, bro, there's already probably 15 bands called Leech probably. or Leeches. And uh, my lady, mm -hmm. she was like, why don't you call it Lord Leech? And I was like, that's kind of fucking cool. That is. Then I immediately went to Google to search Lord Leech, and it wasn't a thing. And then, while looking at word, the word leech, I saw all this scientific shit where I saw the word Annalita, right. and I was like, that's beautiful looking. What a pretty looking word for such a disgusting thing. <laughs> and then your logo makes it not pretty. <laughs> right, exactly. Because <laughs> metal. <laughs> right. And then, uh, yeah, so then that's what it was. It was Annalita, and the album became Lord Leech. Nice. And I kind of like, at the beginning, I was like, I'm going to, I'm Lord Leech. That's going to be me. I'm going to be Lord Leech. But that phased out quickly. I'm trying to think, I'm trying to think of the stage costume that you would wear. Yeah. Like, to be right. Lord Leech. <laughs> Giant fucking leech with face cut out. And a crown or something. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, a robe. Crown of thorns. By the way, stick around. We're going to have a music video from them uh, off of their debut, their debut EP. So um, definitely stick around that. Feel free to like and share it. And if you want to be on the channel, whether reviewed, interviewed, or both, hit me up using my email address or the social media link down there for Room 6. That's also where you can find my own CDs that I put out, um, Patreon page for Room 6, where we have patron-only content, including Two Brains, One Bottle, my whiskey buddy and I, Sean Flume, uh, drink some whiskey and talk about 
all sorts of stuff for an hour, totally like unedited and unfiltered, and and it's really nice. Uh, it's a nice break, change of break, uh, change of pace. Take it. But also, Room Six Shop merch, yay! Um, every dollar that comes in goes to the scene to either make better videos or to uh, put on things like. I'm excited to announce August sixth, Chiba Hut on Rainbow and Sahara. I'm going to be live streaming it as well. The first ever Room 6 Rocks Summer Showcase. Five acts that have been on the channel are going to get to perform. we pay them. They'll be able to put out their merch. They'll be able to play to, you know, audience members that wouldn't normally go see their stuff because it's it's a very demix here on Room 6. And and the bands even get free food. So what, what do you want? Oh, free but it's, it's going to be really cool. It's <laughs> a, yes, Chiba. exactly. It's a thank you to the to the uh, the acts that have made the channel what it is. It's a thank you to the subscribers and the viewers like you. And uh, I hope you can make it August 6th, first Saturday of August, Chiba Hut, and, and there'll be a live stream as well, and I'll be promoting the heck out of it. Um, moving on. Throwing oh, ads in, I like it. That's about, I don't know. That's, you gotta do it. I did notice in the ad you said every dollar goes back to the scene, so does that mean you're going to give us money? <laughs> <laughs> it, it means that I'm going to put on things like, it means, yeah, not, it means that if I'm at your show, I will be uh, buying drinks. Okay. And, uh, uh, you know, doing reviews and, and, you know. I like this glass pineapple, dude. Are you in the Thank lifestyle? You. <laughs> no. You know that? Like, no, what? no. My mother-in-law really loves pineapples. So, so have, here's the thing. My yeah, house is the same way. I'm, I'm, I'm all about tiki life. I got pineapples all over my house. Mm -hmm. And then I heard this radio show where they were talking about that the pineapple is like the international yes. sign for swingers. Well, the, oh, okay. oh my God, my house looks like a swingers the, paradise. The, Doesn't it? It the, does. Hey, it really does. It's the, it's the up, upside right. Yeah, it's you like got a, you got a That shows it. swingers. There are swimsuits that have it and stuff. And mm -hmm. people are, have gotten... Proposition. So every time I see the pineapple, I think yeah. like we, we have a freaking colander with pineapples on it. Uh -huh. So, uh, yeah, she's big on the, the pineapples. So of course, it had to work its way in. If you look over there, I saw it. I saw it. a couple the, cutting boards, yeah. I so. saw all the pineapples. The same <clears throat> came in. Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> How many times have you had Analita pronounced with a T instead of a D? Analita. Oh, thank you. Do you have to spell it for people? Not really. Hmm. I, I hear Anlita a lot. Huh. And I go, okay. Okay, cool. I think I've probably called it Ann Lita a few times. I'm trying to think what other mispronunciations I've heard. Analingus. Oh, yeah. That was a good one. I, I've honestly adopted that one. So um, people are yeah. like, oh, Ann Lita. I'm, like, I'm hey, a kind of linguist. Hey. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> I'm a master debater. So, <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, I want to talk about musical influences. Okay. Specifically, that earliest musical influence, the one that, like, I want to do that. What was that song or that artist or that genre? Uh, that, that memory that was like, this is, I want to try doing this. And that started you down this horrible Man, path. There's a lot of them. Yeah. I think the earliest for me, Christ, maybe 1990s. That was wee little fat Tony. But there was uh, the Guns N' Roses song for Terminator 2. <laughs> you could be mine. Yes. So With the, with the toms. My, uh, <laughs> my dad was into metal. So, you know, listen to Metallica and all that shit. I'm like, yeah, this is good. Like hearing Slash ripped at Les Paul, that's it. I want to play guitar. Yep. You know, Sl that Slash is. has that that ability. Like you know, you think of your favorite bands or your favorite guitarists or, or songwriters. They write that that hook, that riff, that hook that you're like, I know exactly who that is, and I know exactly what song this is, and I know exactly what band it is, even if you've never heard it before. Mm -hmm. You know, you're just like, yes, that's a Guns N' Roses song. That is Slash. Once they get through that first intro, like the the light part with the drums mm -hmm. and the guitars, at the little jazzy chord, and it comes in all chuggy. Oh. Mm -hmm. That was it. <clears throat> and for a guy who has a look and who's played with, you know, some big freaking things, he comes across as very, like, you know, Hawaiian almost. You know, very just like chill, whatever, bro. That guy plays fucking guitar for a living. Yeah, I know. I would certainly hope so. Well, but he also, yeah, but you know, like, can't keep a shirt on. <laughs> he came up in the uh, 70s, 80s, mm -hmm. Laurel Canyon scene, and his parents were all in that lifestyle. So he's very go with the flow, you know? Right on. Um, how about you? So I, like, for myself, I kind of, like, think of eras of music. Like, when I was a kid, I was super into grunge music. And I have a brother who's four years older than me, so what he liked, I liked. And I remember the band Silverchair being, like, my favorite <laughs> band when I was a kid. They were kids, too. They were fucking yep. four years older than me touring the world. So that, that made it seem possible for me. Mm -hmm. And then... 
I still listen to like Daniel Johns. He released the record this year. I still listen to his oh, music. Really? Yeah, I I love oh, him. he's oh he can go on and on. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll <laughs> get him started. But it's like Take from away. the grunge days until when I became a teenager. Him and I both uh, when I moved to America, I moved to upstate New York, and that's where I met him. Mm. And we both went to high ago? yeah twenty years. years. We went to high school in upstate New York, and upstate New York there's a really good like hardcore scene, punk scene. Um, so I was going to a lot of hardcore shows, and I think. Around then is when I kind of found the scene I wanted to be a part of. You know what I mean? Right. And, you know, if you're not exposed to the metal or the punk scenes, you have what you, the, you know, you think you know what it's about. But mm-hmm. it is totally a very, it can be very inclusive. Mm-hmm. Unless, of course, of course you're a dick. You know, <laughs> there are, of course, the douchebags. There are, of course, the ones who look at you when you don't show up in black with safety pins. You know, mm-hmm. um, I used to front a, a indie rock band called The Suspense, uh, about that moment right before things break. Right? Yeah. I love that. I love that. Dynamic tension. But <laughs> but I digress. We used to get booked all the time, like it'd be punk bands or, or these weird shows, and I would be, I'd have like some fun, you know, this was back when I was like, I'm going to wear a shirt with funny saying, college, right. you know, or the, the Cookie Monster or something, you know? <laughs> shit all the time. Yeah, like, yeah. Hello Kitty shirt. Because I specifically, <laughs> at that point in my life, I wasn't into black a lot. I wasn't wearing black. But also... I was like, I want to stand out, mm-hmm. you know? I want to be that guy. And then, hey, he's on stage, that guy. Um, and I would walk through crowds, and they would, I would get looks, and it was just a sea of black and pins, and, and I'd be like, I'm the most metal fucker here. Yeah. I'm wearing what I want. Screw you. I feel that, dude. There was this guy back in upstate New York that I played a show with, and he wore Heelys on stage, <laughs> and I still think about it today. <laughs> Who was this? He would, he, he would, I was, it was some kid I didn't know. He would I, Heely on stage? He he didn't Heely on stage, but when he was setting up, he was fucking Heely. <laughs> yeah. Imagine carrying your cab, just scooping well, around. Well, no, he was a fucking singer. Dude. I mean, just like, imagine being awesome. like the sound person, and you're just like, did that? Did yeah, it was, <laughs> it was rad. I was, it was when I was playing in uh, Renee, and it was like a oh. high school band. You know, I was probably that is a high school thing to do. Yeah, I still think about it today. He didn't so. wear the heelys to the show. He just didn't take the heelys off, right? Because I'm sure he was ah, heelys. He just around. wears heelys. Yeah. That's something I missed. Uh, I, I, being 50 this year, Christ, I, I missed out on the whole heel. By the time heelys was happening, I was in college. I'm like, I'm okay. No, right? Yep. I was too old for heelys too. But you know what? They're coming back. Sad. The, the 90s grunge thing is an alternative is coming back. Uh-huh. Um. And there's, there's actually a number of, of bands in town that you listen to them, you're like, yes, you're, you're doing it right, you're bringing it back, and not just, well, here's a cover of, you know, blink, of, uh, I don't know, Blur. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Hair song too. Woo-hoo. Yes. We went to the same place. So, Kevin. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Kevin. Want we'll to talk about Contra. Oh yeah. Okay. So, talk to me about Contra. What, what? What is uh, what was Contra? It was a band. Contra was a band that I was in in Chicago for about six years. Um, mm-hmm. I absolutely love those boys. Yeah. They are in an awesome band now called Empath. Um, Contra ended, I think, two thousand nineteen because we kind of just got tired of doing what we were doing. Mm-hmm. We all really didn't love mm-hmm. the music we were playing anymore. And I got a job offer in Las Vegas. So it was like... <laughs> Follow the money. Yes. Yeah, all three things kind of just like, all right. So we did one last like goodbye show and uh, called it quits. And well, then, it's, it's good you ended that way. Yeah. Oh, no. we It wasn't like a... Hey, we, you know, in fact, the singer of Empath mm-hmm. is the, was the drummer of Contra. And he had flown out... He did a Dave Grohl. Actually. <laughs> no, it wasn't the weekend that you got, that we met. Um, but he had flown out... In February, mm-hmm. to be right. in a music video, he's a guest vocalist in a new Annalita song, new Annalita music video. Oh, I think I saw a post about that. Yeah, so that's going to be released in September. Um, but yeah, I got sidetracked. Contra was a metalcore band I sang for. Uh, we toured a lot. He actually saw us play live in Long Beach, California. Um, it's a good show. LBC! Yeah, we played all it's over the country. We <laughs> enjoyed what we did, and we had a lot of fun, and it was a great time. And then it just got to a point where you're like, "What the fuck are we doing, dude? We're spinning our wheels." Or What's that? Spinning your wheels, kind of. Yeah, it was. You know, we toured a lot for a band with no record label, and so you got to do that sometimes. Yeah, I mean, and we did, and it, it, it's you know, bands breaking down and investing your money and not seeing the return, and it just. And after a while, too, you know, like when we st- it was a six year band. So when we started the band to when we ended the band, I think myself 
I wasn't really in love with what we were playing. And I think oh, every, sucks, yeah. and everybody else kind of felt the same way. They kind of grown out of, you know, we played like a the metal core with like the clean singer, harsh screamer, mm-hmm. keyboard player, kind of like electronic metal core kind of stuff. And we just didn't really listen to that kind of music. Oh, <laughs> you know what I mean? We start so we started were, playing it, and it, like that's the sound that developed out of Contra. So you were playing what you thought you should play. No, it was more of a just there was it was a six member band. Right. Okay. And as a six member band, we had me, a harsh vocalist who was into like Poison the Well and Glassjaw and Every Time I Die. And then we had another guy who played keyboards who was into like Attack Attack and the more under oath and the more kind of singy metalcore. And we had a drummer who was so it's just the members formed the sound of Contra. You know what I mean? We didn't really like say, we're going to play this type of music. We just kind of got together, played, and this is what came out. And at first, we loved it. We released two EPs. We had a great time. We we toured, we toured. But I think after six years of doing it and breaking down on the road and running out of money constantly, being far away from home, we were just like You're playing all the hits. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We were just like, you know what? It's it's time. Let's let's end it on a good note and not end it hating each other. Nice. Um, so that's what we did. Our music's still out there. If you guys want to check that out, <laughs> yes, it is. Contra. Um, I, for those that don't know. What would you say is the main difference between metalcore and mathcore? Time signatures. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's more of a time. Like, so for us, the, the way I kind of, I wouldn't say I, I follow a necessarily formula of mathcore, but the way I write these songs is I just put on one, one, four time of just a metronome and then see how many different time signatures I can get out of that Okay. without completely losing your head bob the whole time so you can just kind of bob your head and be like okay it changed changed again mm-hmm. changed again as opposed to like metalcore which is like here's the first to get to get to get to get to get to get or here's the core core right right right, right. Cor- so yeah. like, you know like our our stuff like it, it's kind of rapid and changes very yes, quickly and, yeah. and um but it all like it if you were to hear what we hear in our in ears and hear the click, it's one consecutive click the whole time. No accents, no switching. It's just one. Yep. And in ear monitors are a viable thing. It, it, anybody who says otherwise is just dumb. Um, some of the best <laughs> bands you love use in ear monitors. They're not listening to the rest of the band necessarily. They're listening to the click. Well, what's <laughs> funny is Guilty. I when I so so I had started this project and then I got my boys here. Mm. And I love them to death. And they were like, yo, let's get some in-ears. And I'm like, no, nope. we're keeping it old school, boys. In-ears, like, in-ears, in-ears are for posers. Or we're, we're, not, not, we're keeping yes. it real, dude. We're going to be playing We're DIY not big enough things. for in-ears or, or they're for posers. Or, right? That was that way. I mean, I wasn't that hard on them. But I'd spread, you know, yeah. I was reluctant, reluctant right off the get-go. And they just went and got them anyways and then bought enough to be like, we got them if you want to use them. I've always wanted to try it. But <laughs> never needed it. Really? Never had the need because by the time I thought about them, the band, I got a text saying, hey, I can't do this anymore. Yeah. And, or, or, you know, I was a solo musician. And I don't need it for that. You know? Well, keep it down myself. Yeah, now that we have them, it's like I would never go back. Oh, yeah. No. <laughs> it's just like it's, it's, yeah. it's perfect. And, and we bring our own drum mics, our own clips, cables, everything. So yeah. when we tell a sound guy when we get on stage, we need two boom stands. That's it. Everything else off the stage. Yeah. We'll just feed you. We're, yeah, we were going to give you. Your spec sheet, your stage plot is very, very small. <laughs> well, it's, we literally hand them like, <laughs> like 18 channels of like, here's kids, yeah. snare, yep. Tom, you know. So and they love you for that. <laughs> most of them. Love, well, love yeah. or hate. Sometimes we get some guys who are like, well, I don't know what to do. And then we're just like, here's what we want you to put yeah. in the PA. Are you familiar with a local band called Revolta? I don't think so. I've heard the name. Oh. And I'm pretty There's, sure I've seen it too. Um, they're more rock. Um, I'll just say straight ahead rock and roll, but but they are more rock or more roll. Yeah, a little bit of both. They <laughs> they have a um, they they have a lot of influences that pepper in. But mm-hmm. the thing about them I, I noticed was I went to see them live, and there's like bass player with the seventh bass string, so it's immediately very. It was almost like math core, but it was not metal, you know, mm-hmm. math core yeah. rock, light rock, if you will. But um, and then the drummer sets. Up, like to the side of the stage, like it. Yeah. So from the audience, you're like, it's balanced. Yeah. Not only that, from a videographer, photo guy, getting content for a channel, 
here's the drummer. Click. Yeah. yeah, I always liked when like the drummers were off to yeah. the side and like maybe a yeah. keyboard player or DJ or something was off. Partially why he did that though was because the headliners. Oh, gotcha. Had, their, know, kid, had yeah. their kid already set up. Yeah. But also, it, it, he was just off the stage, and I was like, it works. But the important thing is that uh, Leo, the uh, frontman and the guitarist, should, everything he has is in a rack. Mm-hmm. He just rolls it off stage, plugs it into the, the house system, boom, instantly mm-hmm. balanced guitar. And, and everybody else, all their monitors and everything is running through that thing. Because I'm looking, I'm like, there's no amp. There's no like stack. There's no mesh. And I was like, yeah, he's going right they have no there. amps on stage. And I'm listening to it and I'm going, this is, a, this is the best sound I've heard live in a long time. And it's strictly because they took away the whole, the, the distance between the amp, you know, right, all right. that, all yeah. that. So we, we, we still, for that, but yeah. we still use uh, our tube amps and our pedals mm-hmm. because we like that natural sound. And plus, you know, we played in Denver not too long ago. And if we didn't have <laughs> stage sound, we wouldn't have sound right. at all. You know well, I mean? Now, I, I want to point out that, that part of the reason they do this is because a lot of their shows, they were playing in a casino at Club, yeah, Club course, 172 at the Rio. But also because... They are trying to get as clean a sound as possible. Mm-hmm. Um, we so. we need that feedback. Yeah, and it's like you know with the the amps we use, we use the sixty five hundred five combo, and it's got ah. it's got a DI right on the back, so we just you know it's good for our in ears. We get the mm-hmm. DI for our in ears, and but we still get stage value. So if something stage. dies, you can still hear yourself. Yeah, exactly. Nice. Uh, which leads me to actually gear. Now, oh, man, <clears throat> Charlie's not here, mm-hmm. so Charlie's like the gear. He's, our, our, he's, he he runs he's, our. He's rack. the drummer, right? Yeah. He runs our rack. Yeah, though, drummers are gear horse. So. Yeah, <laughs> so he's not here. So it won't it won't take an hour to get to get this right. question answered. Um, what do you rock at a stage? Or sorry, what do you rock at a show? Oh, we're gonna be here all day. Feel free to go as granular. <laughs> it's long form interview, buddy. Okay, I'll, I'll go strong. I'm, I'm, I'm very quick. I am very basic, bare bones. If I you heard will. that about you. Yeah, I'm basic <laughs> bitch. So I used a sixty five hundred five combo um, with a tube screamer, a sonic maximizer, and. Um, just a basic boss noise suppressor and I have a pitchfork I use for, <laughs> for fun and I have a delay pedal for my solos that aren't actual solos. And then I always use my piece of garbage Schecter guitar. I put some respect on Schecter. Yeah. yeah. How dare you? It's dude. Do you make guitars? I don't. But <laughs> like, here's the thing. Here's the thing that I, 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 you know, Tony, <clears throat> Tony's got a nice collection of expensive guitars. But one time he let me use one, I bled all over it. As you do, yeah. I, yeah. I, so I, I, it's I, like, I, you know, the last, we, we played a show in, in uh, Prescott, Arizona, and the power went out on my side of the stage. I took my guitar and just fucking threw it and kind of went and grabbed the mic and started, like, I, I, don't, I want a guitar I can take chunks out of and throw around. Oh, yeah, you want a bar, a bar, bar guitar. Right, exactly. Yeah. So. All the guitars on my room, uh, on, on Room 6 uh, guitar wall. Not a single one cost me more than two hundred bucks. Okay, so I spent more than two hundred. Pawn shop, bucks. baby. Well, no, because some of them were actually more like really, a six, seven hundred. Well, yeah. some were really good finds. <laughs> some were really good finds. Yeah. Some were cheap at the time. Right, right, right. And right, right. I'm, they're just like I'm playing in a bar for four hours. I don't need a thousand dollar guitar. I do. Yeah, yeah well, <laughs> I do. But again, a nice collection. I'm playing co- at that point. I was doing four hour cover shows, and you're you know doing brown eyed girl. I'm doing. Yeah. I'd still be the guy that's dropping fifteen hundred plus on a Martin just because. There's your guy. There you. There you go. Right there. Hit him up. That's, that's he's, your, he's your target audience. <laughs> yeah, but for for a year for me, jeez. Let's run through the guitars. Pick, Actually, so. re- before we real quick, do you bring your own mic to a gig? Of course. So what are you singing through? Um, what just uh, I think it's a Audio Technica basic stage mic. Yeah. I I normally yeah. would use a fifty uh, fifty eight, but. The thing is, is I used 58s through Contra, and then I got the mic that I have now in Contra. I'm like, this sounds way right. fucking better than mine. If you get the chance, try an Electro Voice. I don't know the model, but I got a, 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 an EV, and that is my... I'm singing outside, and I need to be actually heard. Yeah. That's my mic. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. I'll mm-hmm. check it out. Whereas 58 is 58. 58 right. So, yeah. I mean, I, and once I switched to what I use now, I was like, this is just... Way yeah. better for the the tone right. that I scream. I believe I have an Audio Technica, one of those ones that like sits in the cradle, uh, the the ribbon ones. Okay, cool. For right. you know th- that I never use, but you know it's designed for studio really. Mm-hmm. Anyway, all right, let's, play. let's run through my shit. So guitars, um, big proponent for Epiphone. Um, mm-hmm. They used to get a lot of shit, but they've come a long way and they build a quality instrument, especially <laughs> last year Justice. forward. The uh, inspired by Gibson line, solid, but. I've got, my main is a 21 Epiphone Les Paul Custom with Fishman Fluence Modern Pickups. Not endorsed by either, but if you guys are watching, let's talk. 
<laughs> Any of this talk. Um, so my backup was actually my Gibson Les Paul studio. The one I bled all, uh, all, all over his Gibson I, Les Paul studio. I actually had um, a drummer and who also white. I had a drummer who, yeah. also, who also played guitar. For whatever reason, needed to, to play my guitar at a show for something. I forget why. Oh, because he, our band, was on a bill with. This other band he was doing. Uh, so he said, hey, can I play your guitar? And he, I get it back, and there's blood on the white pick guard. Nice. I'm like, thanks, Dick. Oh, the white <laughs> and and when, you take the, when you take the CD out of the case, there's the picture of the guitar with the blood on it. <laughs> That's not a bad idea. Yeah. But anyway. Uh, so the guitars. It used to be the Gibson studio for the backup. That has since been retired because it needs a good setup, and I'm just too lazy to do it. And that is now replaced with uh, the brand new Matt Hafey uh, Les Paul Custom, or Les Paul Origin. It's a custom, but it's got the Fishmans, very similar to mine, but they've got a different voicing for the third voicing. It's a whole thing. Those run through, jeez, what the hell's my effects chain? The Boss Tuner, EQ, Tube Screamer, Noise Suppressor, Delay, Tremolo, Pitchfork, Delay again, and a Looper. Looper is going to be fun. I put that on the board finally. Mm-hmm. You're going to fucking love it. And then all that goes into the 6505 plus combo for live setting in the studio. It's either the 5150 or the 5153 stealth. So guys like you make me just wonder, what am I doing with my gear? <laughs> I've got a lot of toys. And that's just... I've learned I mean, so much about tip. guitar gear. Because I mean, I, I feel bougie because I have two distortion pedals. I have an Ibanez 2. I have an Ibanez 2 and I have the old Boss Orange. Oh, the DS1. That's but this, again, this was indie rock. I mean, I, just, I, need. I, did, I have a delay. I have a chorus. I have... The tuner pedal, boss, and I have um, the um, compressor. I have uh, a crybaby. Ooh, my crybaby is because awesome. if you're gonna wah, I mean crybaby. Yeah, absolutely. And then um, I have messed. I have a um, one of the old boss uh, two pedal uh, loop stations. I cannot freaking get that thing dialed. I cannot land it when I need to land it. It takes a lot of practice. <clears throat> I've got the single. The yeah, I, I, res- I have mad respect for loopers that like. You show you show up and you're gonna loop and you you build a song out of nothing. I have mad respect for you when you do it right. Yep, we don't do it right. No. <laughs> so I, I'm using that strictly for noise. Yeah, we, we yeah. Well, you, you saw us live, so when we play live, you know we. I don't like talking between songs. I can sit and talk to someone all day, but I don't like forced banter of frontmen. I think it's very. Corny. How's everybody doing tonight? Right, read the audience, and if you can right. get it right, do it. But yeah. like, don't force it. And a lot of the times, I don't like talking between songs. Right. So between songs, we connect our mm-hmm. songs with feedback and noise and whatever. I just honestly, I, I click my, <laughs> I click my delay on, and I turn the feedback up all the way, and we'll get a nice little and I click my tuner and tune my guitar while that's doing that. There you go. And then in my ears, I can hear Charlie go one, two, three, four, and I turn everything off, and we're back into it. Nice. So that's kind of like what he's got his looper going for. So he kind of do the same thing because he's got secrets. He, you know, he's got two delays on his pedal board because he's doing more of the. I like to call them analeeds. <laughs> He's doing the analeeds. It's not really. Like, out. Uh, it's not really like lead guitar. It's just like noise or something that's kind of different than what I'm playing. Excellent. So he's got you know multiple delays on there to kind of so he can't really fuck with his settings to do what, how I do it. My delay is simply for making obnoxious sounds. As you do. Mm-hmm. Right on. Um, um, pitchfork. So yes. <laughs> so, how granular do we want to get? Are we all? I only use these strings. I only use these picks. I do only use these specific strings and picks. See, the the whole point of this question is, how can I sound like you? Oh, it's the one time I don't have picks in my pocket. The Cavalita pick? I have have picks that say Cavalita. I just got a pick last night, actually, which is a weird sentence I never thought I'd say, but I I was at a show um, at Taverna Costera. I've reviewed them. Here. Hey. And I was there for um, primarily Crimson Riot. Uh, They've been on the channel, and they're going to be on the channel again. They are actually the headliners at the August 6th showcase. Oh, nice. Cited. And um, there was a couple other local bands, one of which was kind of like, they called themselves alternative, but they were all alternative punk, in my opinion. Yeah. And they were um, the Forget Me Nows. I like it. Yeah, right. That's nice name. name. The openers were Negative Nancys. Oh, I know, I know Negative sold, Nancys. Yes. I'm so glad. Sorry to interrupt, but oh, um, I think it's the singer of Negative Nancys. Uh, I had very briefly jammed with a couple of people, uh, a punk band I played drums in, mm-hmm. and she was in the band. Yeah, they were amazing, and yeah, they, they were awesome. they were no nonsense, right ahead, bass punk. Yeah, songs, awesome. songs really, about really, really you good. know songs about basically, you know, punk stuff. 
but they uh, play like fucking punk rock bowling and but, shit. Like they're legit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, they were definitely legit. And it was like <clears throat> opening. And then every band after them, I was like, oh, because every band is awesome. And um, yeah. and Crimson Ride is generally like they come out out of the gate just bass player Chris just leaping and just boom on the beat and they're just boom, 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 boom and it's polished and it sounds amazing. It doesn't sound fake. And they got a megaphone. And you're just like, this is... Get me a megaphone. Yeah. yeah. When the headliners ask, why aren't Crips and Ryan on a record label? They have a song about record labels and how much they suck. But but uh, the headliners out of LA were gay CDC. It's exactly oh, what you think it is. I know, yeah. I, I saw all the posts because I'm friends yeah, with the... the I, have never, I had never seen them. I kept hearing, have you seen them before? Oh my God. I'm there taking photos and videos. And these guys, mo- some of them are older than me. What some very older than me, and I'm like I can't keep up. They're all over the place, breaking the fourth wall constantly. And it was just I, I eventually I got what I needed, and I was like I give up. I'm gonna just enjoy. And they proceeded to play for over an hour, and just crushed it. And it was like I'm listening to ACDC, but <laughs> dayer than hell. <laughs> did, they change, did they change the lyrics of the song? Oh yes, very much so. so Dirty dudes, like, dunder cheap. Oh, fuck. Okay, that's what it is? Yeah, yeah. I'm about, I was going to be I, like, I'm, I'm on a, my knees. I'm a bottom child. Come in me. I'm a bottom oh, child. Yeah, yeah. It's, it, right, that's I mean, awesome, dude. It was not meant for kids. At one point, Singer takes a shirt off. I don't off. think ACDC is meant for kids. No, but but like Singer takes <laughs> Singer takes one of his many out. There were three costume changes. He Hell yeah, dude. He takes a shirt off. Suddenly, he's wearing a, a white shirt, photocopied, big old penis. Hell yeah. He's got your by, the end, by the end of it. By the end of it, okay? Giant inflatable penis thrown out to the crowd, and cool. he's he's riding it, and he's throwing it to women, and and and, and he's like, "You could take that home." And I'm like, "That's a fucking souvenir." So they're finishing a song, and I'm standing there doing my thing, and uh, you know, photos and, and stuff, and the bass player, and I, I'd already talked to them. I'm going to be doing a virtual interview with them, so they they knew who I was. I wasn't just some guy there. And he, the bass player's hold holding up the last note, and he goes like this with a pick. He's like, ah, ah. like hey, "Hey, buddy," you know, and I. I I grab the pic from him. He's like, "All right." I, I look, and it says Gacy DC. I turn it over. It says, "Have a twink on me." <laughs> That's awesome. What a great. <laughs> of course, it was purple. But what I was a great just like, guitar pick. Have a twink on." Is, yes, he didn't oh. chuck it. He's like, hey, "I want you to have this." It was. Oh, and it was also it was a bass pick. It was very. Yeah, it was like thick. four times the thickness of that. Yeah. It was four like, times thicker than thick a with five C's. Four. But it was just, it was, it was like I have to go show this to people. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. Right on. Um, so. We've gone down the rabbit hole of gear. We're coming back out. Thanks for sticking with us. Uh, you know what? I think we need a booze break. What do you think? Booze break? Booze break! We're back! So, real quick, I wanted to ask Kevin another question, if you don't mind. Of course. Uh, what is the bear, and why is it your favorite sandwich? The bear? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> we're talking about that? No. Okay, so that's a TV show. I haven't even watched it yet. But it's a... What? what? You had a text message conversation. With my, yeah, with my fiance. Yeah. About, hey, do you want to watch a show about her favorite sandwich? We're, I mean, she's born and raised in Chicago. I had lived, I consider Chicago my home because I've lived there the longest of my adult life. And there's a sandwich there called the Italian Beef. And this show is about a kitchen that makes Italian beef sandwiches. <laughs> so okay. I said, hey, do you want to watch a show about our favorite sandwich? So wait, the show's called The Bear. Yeah, I don't know what that about means. About an Italian beef. I mean, if you look on the on the poster, there's like, it says the original Italian beef. Like, that's what it says on the poster, on the sign. All right. I bet, uh, okay. <laughs> Italian beef. I mean, I, I'm I, making Italian beef on uh, 3rd of July party. Italian I, beef and chicken riggies. I was going to say we got new riggies. Chicken riggies. Italian Italian beef. I, I was at a very, very, very pride friendly show last night and the bear means something different there. Oh yeah. Yes it does. <laughs> yes, it does. So, alright. Um, that It was just one of those things I was like, I gotta ask him about the bear. What's, kind of, what's in that sandwich? I haven't seen the show. Have you seen the show? No. Yeah, I don't know what it's about. I don't know what the bear is. I don't know right. who the bear is. So apparently, it's Italian beef. Right. Can I do a sandwich? I thought that was going to be a minus. They dip the whole sandwich. sandwich in fucking gravy. Well, yeah, right? that's what you do. And then you, to eat it, you got to do the hunch. Yeah. I learned that from Guy Fieri. You got to <laughs> lean on your elbows. And you do the hunch because <laughs> all the jardinier and everything's going to fall out. Exactly. I make a mean one at my house. It takes about 12 hours. Yeah. You know, it's one thing we don't do here is make, make like actual sandwiches like that at this yeah. house. We do a lot of cooking. My daughter does a lot of cooking. That drawer is full of knives that she doesn't even use anymore because she uses the, the, the big ones, but... She's, for a long time, she's been cooking. She makes, like, 
Japanese chicken curry and yeah, yeah, yeah. and all sorts like I make all food that gives you heart attacks. That's what I. Oh yeah, we do it too. I eat a lot of gabagool. <laughs> I just had a barbecue beef today. <laughs> anyway, I digress. Thanks for sticking with us. One last question for you before we pivot. Okay. A lot of friends. Um, congrats on the engagement. Thank you. Having a metal wedding. Elvis wedding. That may be hard to do because I don't know if you've heard. No, listen, we are fucking shook about it, dude. Yeah, <laughs> like we. For those of you that don't know, yeah. um, <laughs> the the people that own the, the rights to Elvis's name finally, for whatever reason, suddenly decided to stop to go after all the chapels that are having Elvis marry you and say no, cease and desist. Mm-hmm. I don't know why. So instead, it's not going to be Elvis. It might be a pelvis. It would be no, pelvis. It'll, no, it'll, it'll be, be like a guy who looks like Elvis. Well, no, it'll be his like pelvis. Name Pelvis. Yeah, it'll be lounge singer or, you know, right, classic right. rock artist or, you know, something like that. I think Pelvis is a pretty good one, though. That, that's fantastic. Yeah, I'm not Elvis. <laughs> I'm, 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 Pelvis. I'm Elvis. <laughs> Next. Right. Well, it, it's funny, too, because, you know, Alicia and I, we sat down and we, like, planned everything out. Well, to an extent, we, you know, still picking the day and whatever, but, like, we had found the chapel. There's one where you can ride in a pink Cadillac. I might be able because to have... of course you can. I, you can ride in a pink Cadillac down the aisle. We were even looking... Whoa! Yeah, it's... down the aisle. Pink Cadillac drives you up the aisle. Full-size caddy. Yeah. They just open these double doors. It drives right up to the front. You get out. You go up the front. They also have other impersonators. So I was thinking about having, like, Michael Jackson stand behind me and, like, you know, fucking Hunter S. Thompson for no reason. Just all these different impersonators for no reason, just to be hilarious. God, I almost want to make a video of that. And then, well, <laughs> we were also going to do, because it's like, you know, the, the, the wedding package you're going to pick is like, it allows for like 200 or something guests. Mm. So we were just going to be like, hey, if you want to come, show up. I'm not feeding you. <laughs> <laughs> in fact, as soon as this is done, we're getting in an RV and taking the fuck off for a few days. You so. get your own fried <laughs> peanut butter and banana sandwich. <laughs> yeah, dude. Ooh, that <laughs> just give everybody a jar. <laughs> <laughs> it's a jar of peanut butter. Here you go, guys. It's a keepsake. It's got it's got the date on it in our yeah, faces. Those are names. <laughs> I was in I was in a checkout at uh, uh, La Bonita, which is a Mexican grocery store here. Smaller than this Nutella jar was sitting there with the register, and I was like, "It's so cute." I like that. Yeah, I would crush that in a heartbeat. Anyway, <laughs> that's a shot of Nutella in my book. Exactly. It literally was like this is meant for about. Four Ritz crackers. That's like, that, what is the point of this little tiny thing? As for, I want sweets. Here you go, kid. You Not can't possibly like get over one. Okay, I digress. Yeah. <laughs> Rabbit holes. Anthony, little Anthony Scarnelli. <laughs> it is um, car- Carpetero? No, Carretero. Carretero. I don't know where it became. New York to Las Vegas, huh? Oh, it's it's a longer journey than that. So where was Utica in that? That's New York. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know that. That, that shithole. That was wow. born and raised there. Mm-hmm. I, I don't have fond memories. Well, not, not even playing shows at the uh, Utica, North Utica Denny's? No, oh, I wish. <laughs> I, I worked thinking... at that Denny's. You know about that Denny's? I worked at that Denny's when I was like 18, 19 years old. I washed dishes. I worked Thursday, Friday, Saturday nights, and I had to break up fights. That was Every like, weekend. That was like part of, like, the gig. Like, hey, right. you're going to work overnights, you can drink on the job, smoke weed, do whatever you want to do. But but if there's, like, a parking lot fight, that brawl, like, you need to kind of pull some people out of it. And, like, Sounds like work 2.30 a.m. Oh, Everybody's dude, there. Yeah, it was brutal. It would pack up, dude. It was gnarly. Yeah. Good times. I wish we did a show at that Denny's. No. Was, <laughs> did anybody ever... Fry? Well, okay, I was going off, of course, some social media. Yeah, yeah. the video. Yeah. The fuck is up, Denny's? Um, but... Uh, did anybody actually ever play a show? Like, can you imagine just kind of rocking up in the parking lot of a Denny's? Oh, man. There portable, was a place, portable stage. Just there was a place in Utica when we both lived there um, called Skaterama. <laughs> roller rink. It was, a, yeah. it was an old roller rink. And it was to the point, I, I don't think they even had roller stuff there anymore. They did. Did they still? They have, but like when we booked the shows, Bill would like block it off. Like, okay, we're not doing open skate. We've got. But why right. not? But they, well, here's so, the thing, dude. They awesome. so they started having shows there, yeah. and then <laughs> bands like I I played with Stray from the Path there. I played with I wrestled the bear once there. I did remember. I did remember. What was the name of that band? I wrestled the bear once. They're they're <laughs> amazing. They, they were huge. That's they, a great, they great name. In fact, the singer of I wrestled the bear once now in Spirit Box, which is like one of the biggest metal bands right now. Oh, huh. they're um, one of the first bands I've heard, and this was what pre two thousand and ten. They were like bringing dubstep into metal. Yeah, like, yeah. they did a whole remix. For a day to remember played at Skaterama. They're fucking 
And where's this again? Utica, Utica, New York. Okay. Yeah. And there was a bunch of huge shows going down in this little roller rink. Now it's all dilapidated and the yeah. roof collapsed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it sounds like Crystal Palace here. Yeah. I mean, it's on its way. It, Crystal Palace is kind of, I want to roller skate, but I want to be sad. <laughs> Skaterama. Yeah. Well, I want to be sad. Just pull up to the parking lot. Right. Uh, three spaces. I was I was pretty sad when I was a kid and I'd be there because I never got to ride in the big roller skate. I always see that birthday. fucking yeah. I'd see big that. roller skate. They had a big roller skate for like whoever's birthday it was could sit in this giant roller skate and was, do your princess wave. Yeah, pretty, pretty much. much. And nice. I just wanted to beat that kid up. Every <laughs> time. Fuck you. Oh god, those filthy costumes they would put on like the bear and the rabbit and push you around. <laughs> we're like, back to the bear. Stains and shit on the side. Yeah, yeah, that's gross. <laughs> Are you sure you're not talking about the show I was... Never mind. I mean, there might have been some overlap. <laughs> so, I just wanted to say real quick, raise your, raise your glasses to Grandma Betty. Grandma, Grandma, Grandma Betty. Betty represents. She has your back so hard. Oh, yeah? On, online, yeah. Mm. My grandmother. Yes. How the fuck did you find my grandmother? Oh, this guy does his research. I have, I have been called the next Nardwar. <laughs> Holy shit. And she's got something... No, I'm just kidding. Shit, man. But no, man, like... It's the cutest thing. It's just like, I'm so proud of him. He's in this band. And she posts like your video and I'm like, your grandma's not, can't be listening to this. Come on. Dude, you'd be surprised. Yeah, no, no, you would be. be surprised. Because think about it. I'm going to be 50 this year. She's going to be 70. I think. Yeah. When I'm 70, I'm going to be listening to stuff that that guy, you can't see off camera, has no <laughs> idea what it is and would never <laughs> listen to it. I like that little like yeah. yeah. It's like the old the old folks' homes rocking the limp biscuit. <laughs> oh, that's gonna be awesome, dude. That's the home I want to be in, dude. Those nursing homes get crazy out here, like like full on it's a sex party all the time. That's what I've heard. But yeah, if you have somebody in your life who's a musician and you're not a musician, please support the hell out of them. Even if it's just a case of hey, they're doing a thing and I'm proud of them. Good for them. It, it, because it really makes a difference and it's so goddamn wholesome. Yeah. Plus, old people have Facebook. Nowadays, yeah. <laughs> Not my mom. My mom's 87. She oh, she hates Google. Smart woman. Vehemently. She hates she she hates that she has to use a computer. She uses it for games, and she uses it to email. That's about it. And and she hates Google because it, it's Google. But um, but if Google wants to sponsor me. <laughs> right. <laughs> right on. But we're almost done, gentlemen. Um, what's coming up for you next? What's the big thing? Um, so hell. Yeah, so we tour a little bit. A little bit. Um, every month we do uh, a weekend run where we get out, play some markets out, out of town. So in July, we are going to San Diego and Anaheim. Where are you playing in San Diego, if you don't mind? Till Two Club. I have heard of it. I, I, I lived there for a total of eight years. Started getting into music, doing music a little bit there, but it was like solo acoustic kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And, um, no, actually, I'm sorry. My first band was in San Diego, and I was trying to get, you know, figure things out. Um, but I don't know what, I don't know about Till Two Club, other than the name. It looks nice. Um, it it seems like they, you know, we talked earlier about gear. It seems like they can accommodate for our in-ears and have the proper audio techs there to be like, Uh, okay, yeah, we got you. But do you have any weird requests on your rider? Like oh, green M&M's yeah. or something. Not mm-hmm. yet. Not yet. I'll get there, though. Trust me. Because you know the thinking behind having that weird thing on the right, right? I was a production assistant for years mm-hmm. in Chicago at a venue where I had to pull thorns out of roses, and I had to go to grocery stores and get things. I had to go to a Target and get uh, extra long black shirts, which I couldn't find. So I ended up going to a liquor store in like the kind of dangerous part of Chicago where they sell... Those long yeah. black right. T-shirts, and I bought them there. Yeah, it's so nice. Yep. So I've had to do that. See, if you, don't, <laughs> if, if, if you don't know, a lot of musical acts when they are playing out of town the venues, they'll they'll have a rider, which is basically like a here's what we require in order to play your venue, and they'll put some weird thing on there a lot of times, like only green M and M's or you know thorn all roses with no thorns, because if if a venue won't pay attention to that weird thing, they're not going to pay attention to the big things. Well, the, the thorns thing, I had to, like, they asked for 
uh, two dozen roses. And I said, cool, do you want me to just put them in the room? And they were like, we're going to throw them into the crowd. And I'm like, yeah, maybe not. Maybe not thorns. Yeah, and I was like, oh, how much okay. does that suck? You're like, here you go. So I, you throw it until you catch the ah, Right, exactly. Ah. So I like went to the store, and I'm like, uh, do they have thornless roses? I don't know if that's Yeah, they're called fake roses, man. Okay. Yeah. Well, <laughs> you know, the guy, the guy has, here's the thing, you know, they have hospitality budgets. Whatever I don't spend, I have to give them back in cash. So I'm trying to spend sure. more money than whatever. So yeah, I ended up having... Black roses. I ended up having to buy a bunch of roses and sit there and pull off thorns out. Two dozen roses. Good on you. Somebody, you know, hopefully somebody thanked you for it. I ate mac and cheese while I did it. So. <laughs> Nice. There's, there's, there's a memory. I remember sitting, eating mac and cheese, pulling thorns out of roses, being like, "I paid twenty thousand dollars for audio school, and I'm fucking pulling roses out of thorns." <laughs> Getting all mad at myself. What am I doing with my fucking career? Oh, to pay to be in the it's gonna, Yeah, it's gonna pay for itself one day. <laughs> yeah, right. That was it's like like going to writing school. Right. Exactly. Jesus. Oh man. Um, that leads me to actually a question about your favorite show memory as Annalita. What is that? Just that memory that either was a tick on the rock star checklist. Uh, somebody went, to, you know, that was crazy. Someone went to jail, or, or it was really, really good, or really, really bad. What is that rock? That 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 favorite memory of yours? So, oh, I'll start this one. You, okay. you can you can do yours in a second. For, for me personally, <laughs> nice for me personally, it's like you know, Annalita. We haven't been a band for that long. Um, our first show was what February. February. Yeah. We played three shows in Vegas, and then our fourth show was in Denver, our fifth show was in Salt Lake City, our sixth show was in Lake Tahoe, our seventh show was in Phoenix, our eighth show was in Prescott, our ninth show is going to be in San Diego, our tenth show is going to be in Anaheim. So, for me, it was probably Denver, because we had spent 12 hours to get there, and it was like the first time we had left our, you know, we left Vegas. You know, we kind of developed this or kind of thought of this thing of like, you know, we're a band. We want to play shows. It's not really kind of responsible to kind of oversaturate our own market and play Vegas every single month. Let's get the fuck out of town. Let's go to all these other cities around us. And, you know, we're going to end up by the end of the year, we'll be in Salt Lake City three times. We'll be in Phoenix three times. We'll be in Denver twice. You know, so we're kind of doing that. But for me, my favorite memory was that show because... We spent 12 hours to get there. We stayed in a hotel the night before. We were well rested. We got there and we played awesome. Like we just played very, very well. And, you know, it was the first time we got to play in front of people where it wasn't our friends being like, yeah, you guys are awesome. Right. right. You know what I mean? So for me, it was just like, all right, we, we, we can do this. I've heard a rumor or I've heard the old story that you sell more merch on the road than you do at home. Yeah. Listen, I'm going to, I'm going to spit some fucking numbers at you too. And this is, this is real shit. We played three shows in Vegas. Mm-hmm. Okay, made ninety dollars in those three shows from merch. No, just oh, oh, all totally. together as a band. Yeah, three shows in Vegas made ninety dollars. We did three shows on the road in one weekend. When we had came back, we were like five, six hundred up. Like we, and this is after gas hotel. We stay in yeah. hotels every night. Dude, and that, three people. That is like, one thing about being in Vegas is there's a ton of music for the audience, but it's oversaturated mm-hmm. and. It's real easy to, to rationalize. Well, I'll see you next week. Yep. Oh, and that's why and, we're and on the road so much. You know, promoters are more inclined to pay you if you're <laughs> from yeah. out of town. Oh yeah, it's Especially, just the way it is. And if you're from Vegas, there's the certain cachet of well, they 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 know how to you know play in that market, so they probably know how to play in Victorville right. or whatever. You know, and every time we play, and and it's, <laughs> it's high school. You know, every time we play in Vegas, well, two out of the three times we played in Vegas, it was. Um, you know, there was some touring band on there, so they'd get a majority of the money. Sure. And, you know, we sit here and look at it and go, like, well, why don't we just get the fuck out of town and we yeah. get the a majority of the money? Well, just- not only that, uh, state uh, venues like Triple B, a lot of times it'll be on the rider that the touring act, the national act or whatever, they get the green room, period. Nobody yeah. else gets in the green room. And I've literally been talking to local bands and been like, why aren't you in the green room? We're not... They, they, Dude, I give a fuck lunch. about a green room, but you were the one who brought me into that green room for the first time. You're like, come on to the green room. I'm yeah. like, am I allowed in here? <laughs> it, I, you and I came in. I'm like, yeah, it's it like is, a really it is, cool It is one of the very few green rooms green rooms that I've been in where I'm like, this feels like an actual green room. It's this not is, bad, yeah. It feels like a party should be had in here. You know, uh, Vamped has a good one, too. Oh, counts, yeah. Although, although one honestly... Of the, one of the green rooms at the venue I used to work at in Chicago, someone stuck a veggie burger to the ceiling <laughs> and then wrote Aussie shit. And put an arrow to it. And I was like, that is... I respect that move. (laughs) I know which band did it. I respect the move. Now, were they saying that 
he is or that this is? This is Ozzy's shit. Like, they, like, stuck a veggie is burger he, to this. Is he vegan? I don't know. Okay. But it was just a veggie pie that probably looked like shit. I'm reading too much into this. And they stuck it to the ceiling and then wrote Ozzy <laughs> shit. As if Ozzy played that venue at one time and then had the worst green room out of the three that... Okay. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, it was fun. The best... In terms of just... This is amazing. From a performer perspective, the best green room I've been in is House of Blues here in Vegas. Oh, oh, the House of Blue Chicago is unbelievable. Dude. Now, if it's anything like this one, they got a fucking like they have spa. They have man. actually they have three green rooms in the back. Each one has a shower. At mm-hmm. least, yeah. the, at least the main one has a giant hood in the ceiling because they know what's up. It's like a, a Fender reverb amp in the wall. Oh, nice! Like, oh, yeah, no, this this, 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 this one didn't have any kitchen there, yeah. but it was just you walk in you're like this is nice for the some apartments, and and you're like I can I have no problem chilling here, and then if I want, I open the door and I walk. Five steps, and I'm I'm, a, I'm a backstage. I can see the, what's going on stage. I like that. Yes. Um, but that was, I, I believe Snoop Dogg had just recently been there. And, and someone had said, yeah, Snoop Dogg was in this. And I looked up, and I'm like, yeah, yeah, he was. Because <laughs> this hood, I mean, you know, a hood, yeah. the, it, it literally was the size of, it was three times the size of a car tire. It was just gigantic hood. And I'm like, yeah, that'll vent out anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sounds like a mm. human out of there. <laughs> All right. We're almost done. Um, oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Did you, you did your. You need to do your best. Uh, your best show. Favorite show memory. I'm gonna have to say the den, strictly because of the venue. Oh yeah, you know what? Yeah, the den also was a good one. Yeah, it's no, where's that? The den was in Prescott, Arizona. It's. It was the last show we played. We're playing there again in August, so we're really excited to go back. Nice. Yeah. It's honestly like not just because of like the venue layout, but the people that run the show. Mm-hmm. Like, it doesn't get much better than that. Yeah, the the guy who runs it, his name is Steven. He's an absolute gem of a human being. Wow. He, uh, so what he had done is started an all-ages venue that's like a coffee shop for, and it's, it's you know, it's Prescott, Arizona. It's not really a lot to go on. So right. He's got a place for people to come and, 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 and hang out and, you know, it's drug-free, alcohol-free, and it just, he gets bands coming in and people show up. And we played an all-day-long festival there. We played yes. at like three in the afternoon. Yeah. It was funny. It's the first time I've ever done in my life. Out of all the shows I've ever played, I've never played two sets under 12 hours. But we had played Phoenix. Mm. We went on stage at like 1030. And then yeah, we, had, yeah, we had played. You're like, oh, now I'm a professional musician. Yeah, we this played, is what it feels like. We played at like 1030. And then we had to be in Prescott at like 11 a.m. Right. To well, play no, at like, least it wasn't Vegas to Prescott. Right. At that time. Frame. It was a two hour drive. Right. But we had to be there at like 11 a.m. and fucking play at like, what, two? Three nice. o'clock in the three, afternoon. Three thirty. It was. Yeah. It was early. It was the earliest. See, I have two favorite show memories. Not to make this about me, but, but <laughs> real quick, House of Blues. Talking about that. That same show. Uh, it, I, we, my band was opening for uh, what was called the NV Showcase. I don't know if you remember that. It was E N V Y. N V was you know capitalized. We're both new to Vegas, so we okay. don't know shit. So it was <laughs> it was <laughs> NV, so. but it was also NV for Nevada. And it was uh, uh, Josh Fig from uh, at the time from Smash Magazine was. You know, doing this kind of showcase thing, but it was at the House of Blues. So you're a local band. This is my chance to play the House of Blues, and mm-hmm. we were opening act. It was awesome. Um, and the thing I remember most is we're done. We're done playing. And I'm the front man, three piece band, so I'm doing the guitar and I'm singing. And we're done playing, and some young guy in the, in the front of the row says, "Hey, can I have your pick?" Check that off my rock star checklist moment. You know, you want my pick? You want my guitar too, dude? No, no, but it, it was like. <laughs> That's what I felt like last right. night when that one guy handed Let me, me just his pick. My shirt. But it was no, no, no. But it was one of those like, yeah, here you go, kid. Pink was like the t-shirt, you know. <laughs> Great game, and you throw. Yeah, right. And so I threw Thanks, like, mean so, I, so I, so I, but I, I was like, wow, he liked my guitar playing so much. He oh, wants my pick. So I, I toss him the pick. Next band comes on, do the thing, and I'm telling uh, the, the lead guitarist about this. He's like, oh, he did the same thing to me. I'm like, no. So yeah, he's he's like just, walking out with he's just hedging his bets, like just in case they get famous. Yeah, I got it. <laughs> you just or maybe get like, like jingly pockets. Yeah, <laughs> <full plastic. laughs> yes. I I used to think that was my favorite show memory, but I, then I remember playing a cover gig under a band name, best band name I ever came up with, Revolving Door. I like it because we went through seven drummers, ended up back on drummer number two. Give it a six out of ten. Fourth, six. wait, wait, but it gets better because <laughs> at the time we started seven piece band. Mm-hmm. Okay, I'm singing gotcha. and playing rhythm guitar. Female singer. She's doing most of the singing. Mm-hmm. That's the, you know we were trying to do that whole casino gotcha, thing. Gotcha, gotcha. Ended up being a four piece band. Mm-hmm. Seven drummers ended up back on number two. Four keyboardists Jeez. ended up no keyboardists. Bass players went through about five. 
and right. 38 special Re- relax revolving door <laughs> and I, I came up with a name and, and as years went by I was like I was so pr- prescient uh, it was 7 years 7 years we did that cover gigs you know mm-hmm. playing for like 50 bucks you know the biker yeah, bar yeah. but um, New Year's Eve Mr. D's biker bar we're playing and it's New Year's Eve we're hoping for some tips maybe a little bit more money I think we got maybe a little bit extra money from the owner uh, but uh, no tips you assholes. So suddenly we're playing. The guy that works there runs across with a mop in his hands across the dance floor to the bathrooms. Like, oh, something happened. Come to find out, dude got stabbed. Didn't huh? di- didn't die, but just got stabbed. It was a biker bar. And Jesus. and yeah. On top of that, a woman walks in from the neck down. Work had been done, and it just wow, hot, hot, hot. Neck up, fifty miles of bad road. Oof. So. Definitely, she's a stripper or, or something, and and definitely got a story. Has stories. She yeah, walks in, obviously <laughs> wasted already. We're like playing, and we're playing, we're, and we're playing cover songs. You know, we're a classic. We're a cover cover band, and we do all sorts of stuff. We're playing cover songs. She starts dancing on the floor, and there's people dancing, and she starts taking her clothes off, and immediately the floor empties because if you're you're let's there, open their shirt up. No, no. <laughs> Because the guys okay, are there with honey. the guys are there with their ladies, and mm-hmm. they know better. <laughs> the ladies are grabbing them, like, "No, we're leaving. This is I'm weird." And we're I'm looking at the band, keep playing, and then and she's like, "That this is how I know she had worked them." <laughs> so she's so we we finish the song. She picks up her clothes, gets dressed, and stumbles out the door. And I'm like, "I hope she's not driving." <laughs> yeah, and it was just one of those that just happened, right? That was weird. Sounds like the type of lady that fall off the back of a motorcycle, and the guy riding the motorcycle has a vest that says, if you can read this, then my bitch fell off. Wow. That was very in-depth. From, from, that, from that unwholesomeness, I want to move on to the last question. You made it. Yay. I want to talk to little Kevin and little Tony. Little. <laughs> We're going to harken back to that question I asked about your earliest musical influence. What is one thing that you wish someone had told you about getting into the music? business and, and that it doesn't change your strengths <laughs> what is one thing that you wish someone had told don't. you yeah besides <laughs> no. well, so this is your chance to talk to new musicians <sighs> how do i be like you yes see it's hard to say because i'm in that weird era of you know when i you know i'm 36 i'm no fucking young chicken you know spring chicken or whatever i'm in my mid-30s so it's like I went through the era of not really a lot of internet reach and not right. really a lot of, um, you know, what kids have today when they're starting music. But honestly, I would think is uh, learn everything behind the scenes, learn audio engineering, learn marketing, learn all of that because you need to know how to do that to, to, to get your music out there. You can be a, the greatest musician in the world and not leave your bedroom. Or you can be awful musicians like Annalita and market yourself in a way where like, okay, we're going to target ads to, to Southern California. And then you go to play Southern California and people are there to see you. Like With, with TikToks. Yeah, TikToks, with videos. Dogs. We have a Twitch stream. We, we do a, a weekly Twitch stream right. that if you are watching this, you should sign up for. What yes. we do is Bink. every... Yes. Right there. It's right there. It'll so also be in the description. Every week we do a Monday. We, we give them an hour of Monday practice. Sometimes that will be a full hour of us playing music. Sometimes it'll be half an hour of us playing music and half an hour of us just talking. Um, band meeting stuff. We we keep everybody updated with shows. And then we have exclusive content of like, you know, you can kind of sit in the studio with us while we're writing music. And you can kind of be a part of, you know, we just did one where uh, I was showing Tony a new song I wrote. And I, we, you know, you have a studio quality. That's watch really us, awesome. watch us in the studio yeah. as I'm like, hey, Tony, okay, this is how you play this riff. This, so and like this song, you'll see it like on our next record at the end of the year. You're right. Like, you're and you, and you'll now. have the memory, the visceral memory of, I remember when they were working on this. Well, here's the thing. If you sign up for our Twitch, it's always free to watch it live, mm-hmm. but you can pay anywhere from six bucks to 26 bucks. Um, and whatever, you know, there's three tiers, whatever tier you sign up for, you get a personalized merchant merchandise package from us. Um, so if you pay 26 bucks, you get a package that's worth about $50 that we will mail to you. Thanking you for all of your support and everything that you do. And then, you know, $10, you get a package that's worth about 20 bucks. And for $5, you get all access to the exclusive content and 5% off all the merchandise. But, um, 
you know, we, we try to be really transparent. Look at with the ad. Yeah. See, it's, it's we try to be, learn marketing. <laughs> we try to be very transparent with our, with our fan base and our audience to, and just kind of be honest with them, you know. A lot of metal these days, I feel like it's, it's over-polished, over-pristine, and people don't really see that, like, you're sitting behind a computer and putting the song together and kind right. of making it into what it is. We are... You can hear our mistakes. You can watch us struggle through writing songs. You can watch us mm-hmm. fucking get mad at each other and watch our attitudes change on camera in real time. And, um, you know, we, we try to give that out to people and, and, and allow people to, to are not from Vegas or even the West Coast because we do travel. Mm-hmm. Not from the West Coast to be able to... to we're, we're sending a fucking merch package out to yeah. England yeah. like this week, dude. It's costing us a fucking fortune, but... Nice. <laughs> like, you know, yeah. so it's... It's, you know, we, we, we try to get out there in different ways, and I guess that's my advice. Find different avenues as well, you know what I mean? You're, you're not going to make it if you just learn the craft of playing music. You're not going to make it. You have to know everything that goes behind it. Yeah, because if there's anything we've all learned from popular music, it's, you don't have to be the best musician, Mm-mm. you just have to be the best products really and exactly. know how to get it out there mm-hmm. and unfortunately what well i think what kevin's saying is don't be a, just a product go ahead and be an artist mm-hmm. but also know how does your product get out there and how exactly yeah. you can get you know approach your fan base and find people who right. are interested in what you are doing specifically mm-hmm. and also if you can cut out any middleman like we do a lot yeah we don't pay for <laughs> Studio time, because I am an audio engineer, Charlie's an audio engineer, and Tony is an audio engineer. So the three of us combined, we have more than enough equipment to record a great album. Right. And knowledge. Don't forget the knowledge. Our, yeah, studio yeah, yeah, base, yeah. our studio bass player makes music videos for a living. He's made music videos for great artists all over the West Coast. This so-called bass player that really exists. He does. You're going to watch a video. You're going to watch a video. Yeah. So, sorry to, yeah. if I'm interrupting, but I think what's important to take away from all this is have the knowledge. Knowledge is power. Even mm-hmm. if you never use it, you may need to one day. You may su- yes. The more you know. Can you put a rainbow behind my hand when I do that? I can at least pop up a meme. I'll do my best. I'll do so, my best. But, I'll, I'll do my but, best. But here's the yeah, budget. <laughs> we don't have the budget for that stuff. Sorry. <laughs> um, but yeah, knowledge is power. If you almost even if you never use it, you may suddenly find the need. Oh crap! I need to know why. Our sound went out, or what's wrong with um, you know our audio interface or something? Knowledge is never wasted, so please, please learn as much as you can Wait, about your craft. Here's here's a little perspective for you, for Anlita. Is on my lunch break, mm. I will be sending these guys merch designs that I have made on Photoshop in my one hour break that I have at work every day because I have Photoshop on a like a work laptop. So I'm just right. like, hey what do you think of this? What do you think? Like He's, you're push. using company resources for personal gain? Oh yeah dude. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> you think I printed out stage plots on a company paper dude? <laughs> oh you the only reason this is on white is because I actually uh I lost the notes I wrote up for you guys and I had to print this up at home. But I have many times come home with Colored sheets of paper, yeah, with with the notes for in the interviews. Uh, uh, you didn't hear that, boss. Sorry. <laughs> so, how about you? Advice to your younger self or to new musicians? Man, practice. I mean, it's cliche, but practice. Like, it's not going to happen. Don't, don't suck. But the biggest one is don't compare yourself to other people. Like, do your shit. Be you. And that's I like that's that the hardest thing to do because oh, I don't know you started well, on. you started going, dude, you started getting into music because oh, I really like that song by so and so. Oh, I don't sound like so and so. Good news. You don't have to. No, just what? do your shit. Do what makes you happy. And yep. you're gonna see people like when you know where we came from, there were shitty bands that were like blowing up, but that's because they were just doing their shit because right. they loved it. And we're yeah. sitting at well, at least my bands are sitting on the sideline. Why can't we do that? What what are we doing wrong? Just thinking too much about this shit. Yeah. Invest in yourself, yep. build your craft and everything will it'll fall into place. Well and Promise. it's like kind of tapping on the note. That you said, too. It's like, I think a lot of musicians, especially today, kind of pigeonhole themselves into some sort of subgenre. Like, we're going to be a deathcore band, or we're going to be a hardcore yeah. band. And it's like, cool, great, you love that type of music and you want to play it. I respect that. But a lot of the times, great bands, like, you can't sit there and say a great band is a certain type of music. They're always just them. It's just right. them. 
right? I mean, and it's like a lot of the yeah. time, it's it's kind of what I said about Contra. Not to say Contra was a great band or anything, but were. what I said about Contra is like you, you know, put some respect on Contra's name. We had six members who came together, and just what the sound we made is what we were. Right. You know I mean, that's kind of how Analita was approached too. It's like I I just decided one day I'm gonna play guitar and I'm gonna scream whatever I fucking comes out of me whatever i record that's what it's going to sound like right. i didn't approach it be like i'm going to be a math core metal core early 2000s like i didn't yeah. you know and then i did it and i was like oh it sounds like norma jane cool <laughs> <laughs> nice. um, great was that it for you that, that's really it just do your thing don't mm-hmm. don't worry about what everybody else is doing just do your shit cool well with that i want to thank you for watching i want to thank <clears throat> you guys for coming on the show mm-hmm. Kink. Kink. I'm empty. Stick around. <laughs> Clunk. Stick around. We're going to see a music video from them. And uh, make sure that you uh, hit the description and follow them on social media. And, uh, yeah. Follow us on Twitch. Yep. We'll, That's our moneymaker. We'll see you after the uh, the music video. Say bye for now. Bye, bye for, for now. now. Bye for now. Jinx. <laughs> one of the 7, 9, 10. You owe me a Coke. That's probably one in the rider. <laughs> <laughs>
I want to thank Annalita for coming by. It was a great interview, an awesome music video. Make sure that you follow them on social media because they do have a new single coming out in, I believe, September uh, called Second City. In the meantime, if you want to see more videos like this, please click up here. And if you want to subscribe, click down there. You know what to do. Ring the bell. Really appreciate all of you. Oh, sorry, sorry to interrupt. Ooh. I noticed you called it a single, but it's more of a double. It's like two overlap. Well, it's two. It's two. So, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. By all means, man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so you ever go to like a burger place and then you see that like they got a burger there, and then you look below it and they're like double, double it, and you're like, might as well double it. It's like two bucks, right? That's what we're giving you. Instead of a single, we're giving you a double. Two songs, two music videos. They connect. They intertwine in the middle. Sorry, go ahead. Is that why it's called Second City? It's one song is called Second, the other is called City. It's about Chicago. It's uh, Second City. I don't get it. Anyways. <laughs> so stay tuned for that. Awesome. In the meantime, like I said, <laughs> if you want to see more videos like this, click up here. And if you want to subscribe, click down there. I really do appreciate all of you, and I appreciate you guys for coming on. Mm -hmm. Thanks for having us. Remember to be amazing. I'm going to nope. stay for one more drink. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I always try to be funny. It's never funny. My wife hates me. <laughs> oh, you, oh, you're funny. Just not necessarily the jokes. Anyway, oh, remember to be amazing, and we'll see you next time on Room 6. Say goodbye. Peace. Ba -da -ba -ba -da -ba. There's always one. <laughs>